doing again. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, as you can tell, I am not alone. I have a very special guest for today's video. Hi. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Molly and I'm here with me. <laughs> Today we are going to be talking about something that I think is especially relevant right now. Basically choosing what you're going to be doing after school or after college. Conversation, sharing our opinions on basically choosing what to do and some of the misconceptions and some of the struggles that come with deciding mm -hmm. whether to go like traditional, traditional, more academic or more creative. Yeah, I feel like we have very different backgrounds. I am kind of representing like traditional academics because if you didn't know, I did a biochemistry degree. I did an art foundation year at Leeds Art University, a year that you do before a full undergraduate that is a one year course that is never in, like gonna be any longer than that. You start it out and then at the end, quite a lot of people go on to do an undergraduate in some form of creative art. Didn't continue it on to undergraduate. I took a gap year. <laughs> and became self-employed and started doing YouTube full time. We are gonna cover, and I'm gonna put the timestamps in the description, so if only one of these applies to you, you can just go and look at that. Um, like, the pressure from your school to do something more traditional, mm -hmm. in inverted commas, mm -hmm. what is traditional, but... Um, pressure from your parents and like them kind of, again, wanting you to go down one path. Lack of support from school on like applications and personal statement, that kind of thing. Uh, trying to decide between two things, which I think was big for both of us. Yeah. So that'd be an interesting one. Uh, and fears about like getting a job or what you do after mm -hmm. whatever this is that you choose. Okay, hopefully this video is quite universally applicable. So obviously if you are being more pressured to do something academic and you want to do something creative, or you're being more pressured to do something creative and want to do something academic, yeah. I do think it goes both ways. It's probably more common the first, Yeah. but Hopefully this is just generally useful and you enjoy the chat. Let's get on with the video. If you haven't already subscribed, <laughs> feel free to do so. Pressure from school, let's talk about that. Were they obsessed at your school with saying like, you're closing loads of doors if you don't do this? I went to quite an academic school, but yeah. they were very much like, if you don't take these A-levels, if you don't do this after, if you don't go to uni, you're shutting all your doors yeah. and that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's just completely not true. Mine were <laughs> also really pushy towards, to start with Oxbridge, but then mm. the applications for Oxbridge closed quite early. So mm -hmm. then after that, it was Russell Group Universities, like high standing, good universities that have like, you know, a reputation to uphold. Yeah. Regardless of what it was you wanted to study. Whereas I think a lot of the time going to the university, like, that suits your course is far more important than if it's a Russell group. Especially when you're still only like, what, 16, 17, you're so young, I think, how are you meant to know? And I think that's really important that if you don't know, it's mm -hmm. actually not too late to change your mind. Like ultimately, you kind of do have to make a decision and that's, like, that sucks because yeah. that's not something you should have to do when you're 17. It's easy to say, oh, you can change that's course, true. you can change that course, so but true, yeah. like, I'm very lucky to financially be able to do that. So I'm not trying to pretend that element doesn't exist, yeah. but I do think in general you can you can change and you can like yeah. work around. Like you are so young. I think that it's important mm. when you're at school to like get multiple people's point of view because if you only speak to your school about it, of course they're gonna want the records that they've got to look yeah. amazing and that they sent X amount of students to Oxbridge or whatever, whatever. But if you speak to your parents or your friends or people completely outside of this situation, so that I had friends that I'd made through YouTube who were doing completely different things mm -hmm. to anybody else in my life because that was their job or because that was like something they were interested in, that really opened my eyes to like other avenues, which is how I ended up doing my art yeah. foundation. That was not something that was told through my school. Liv is sat behind the camera, but it was Liv that told me about that because I, I hadn't been told about anything like that. If there's something you want to do, or there's yeah. even, you don't even have to know, I don't think, like just an area that you're interested yeah. in. You know that you really like photography, for mm -hmm. example. Do your own research. Okay, so the other place that I think there's quite a lot of pressure, which luckily I didn't experience too much, mm. but is from your parents. Yeah. I guess I did in the sense that they were definitely very keen for me to do like an academic, traditional, whatever degree before I did anything else. I think some people have a lot of pressure from their parents, don't well, they? You're in a situation where your parents are really hammering something home, be it like, I don't know, an academic subject or just something that they're interested in. Mm. You have to remind them that it's not their life at that point. I think that it's, it's a hard conversation to have, but like you're becoming your own adult and the rest of your life isn't being led for them. And I think yeah. that's so difficult. And I have friends in this situation that have gone on to do degrees that I just think, 
that's pressure from their parents rather than something yeah. they wanted to do themselves. Just trying to make them understand. Yeah. I think because sometimes it is just that they don't understand. Yeah. Like they just don't, they've never experienced it or they don't know what the, I mean the education system is wildly different so to when different. they were yeah. probably going through it. For example, my parents thought that Russell Group was like the best thing and blah, 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 blah. But I did not go to a, like Bath is not a Russell Group uni. It's still like top whatever. Doesn't mean it's Russell Group. So I think that, I had to explain to them it was still really good a fancy name on it doesn't mean it's not good yeah. but they just didn't get that so I had to like have a conversation finding another authority figure someone you trust someone who you like you have their respect they have your respect whatever mm. that maybe can help not convince but talk to your parents yeah. so if there's someone at school who is on your side or an aunt or an uncle or anyone like that who can kind of help you yeah. if they're not being super supportive I think that can actually be really helpful because sometimes you just need someone else to That's tell them true. don't worry like your kid knows what they're doing yeah. so <laughs> you might have all the <laughs> support and all the like yeah okay you can do that but if they don't have the resources to help you, I think physically applying for non-traditional things is really hard. Like the amount of personal statement and UCAS stuff that you can get out there, even if it's not from your school, it's, yeah. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. But plug for my personal statement video that went up a couple of weeks ago. But I think if you're doing something different, where is that support? Literally. Almost as soon as I said to my school that I wasn't, <laughs> let's behind the camera. She's like. <laughs> um, but as soon as I said to my school that I wasn't applying through UCAS to do this foundation course because. Basically a foundation course goes directly through their website, so it went through the institution rather than through UCAS. And as soon as I said that, my school were like, cool, bye. You know, I'd never been taught how to go to an art interview because it's not the same as having an yeah. Oxbridge interview. It's like a completely different thing. You need a portfolio of work. And I did that basically myself and with my photography teacher with no help from like the authority figure that yeah, I yeah. sit because they just weren't interested. And you know, that's fine to have their own things to be sorted out, but I don't think that just because you're not doing something conventional, you should like fall by the wayside and like not yeah. be ignored but just not have the same support so i did traditional normal ucas mm -hmm. and then for my drama schools two of them were through ucas and all the rest were through um like their own individual portal yeah. so i've done like three different types of application and i will tell you absolutely for free that the creative applications were 500 times harder than the ucas stuff. the support's out there on youtube but the support needs to be for the creative stuff yeah. because like i think I don't know, I would like to see more of that on YouTube. I definitely would like to talk more about, obviously I only have the drama experience, but to talk about that application, there is resources out there. Mm. They're just not traditional. Yeah. So like, if you look on YouTube, there will be stuff there. There are people talking about it. Mm. I mean, I, I think yeah. if you are finding it difficult within school, there will be teachers or like members of staff mm, that will like help you. Like my photography teacher did really help me put a portfolio together. It didn't come from like where everybody else was getting UCAS support from, but I think if you speak to other people, obviously it does depend what you're applying for. The person that's in that mm -hmm. kind of role is probably more helpful. Deciding between two things. So mm -hmm. in my case, I guess this was, do I do like drama stuff now or do I do biochem now? They're so different. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've had a lot of comments recently, especially on my like journey to drama school video, where people have been saying like, I'm in the same position as you. I didn't realize loads of people I think are trying to pick between like two things they really enjoy. Yeah. Um, because a lot of the time I think in that situation it's like a head and heart thing like you know yes. that you're probably gonna get a better job maybe especially at the moment <laughs> um, in something like that but then if you have an absolute passion for something that's creative you're weighing up the options and also that whole like is it a hobby or is it something yeah. that you actually yeah. want to go into and I think a lot of people undermine the creative subjects as hobbies which yeah. they're, like, they're just not because think about the world without all of those things talk about your like this mine was slightly different because I always knew that I wanted to do something creative and by the time I left sixth form I was in a position where I probably could have just about managed to do YouTube full time and take a gap year, not with the intention of doing it long term but with the intention of taking a bit of time to work out what it was I wanted to do. Um, but then I also knew that I kind of feel a bit unsure about whether or not that's a good idea at 18 to go into something so broad and new and like, mm -hmm. you know, nobody can really tell me how to go about it because nobody's done it for long enough to really offer advice. So I thought, okay, I'll apply to do something because even if there is a course that's only for one year, one, it's buying me a bit more time, and two, it might help me work out long term what do I want to do. Yeah. So that was when I applied to Leeds to do the Art Foundation, and in hindsight now I don't think I really gained anything from doing that other than a year that was, you know, experimental, and I did try new creative things, but I wouldn't not do it. Like, looking back now, I think that I made some nice friends, I lived in a different city, mm -hmm. and I experienced stuff that I wouldn't have experienced. Can just, exactly, yeah. like, amount to 
not a whole lot. I yeah. mean, life experience is life experience though, 100%, isn't it? 100% and I think that that was more valuable in that situation. Yeah. yeah, it was a difficult decision and I think I toyed with the idea of both for ages, right up until actually going to Leeds, I was still very unsure. And even when I was there, like if you watch the vlogs on my channel, I was still very unsure about whether it was right and whether I'd picked the right thing between the two. And I was really unhappy because I was mm -hmm. so uncertain. And I don't think I really started to enjoy it until I decided that like, you know what, this is the decision I've made, so we're just going with it because otherwise I'm going to be so miserable flitting between the two all yeah. the time. I know people who've like known what they want to do since they were like 14 oh, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and you might know as well, like I did, like I always was like, I want to be an actress, but I never say it out loud. Um, so that was difficult as well. Yeah. Or you might have absolutely no idea and that's why you can't say it out loud yeah. and that's fine because it happens for everyone at different times. My dad said to me when I was planning this video, he was like, what are you doing? So I explained to him this video and he was like, follow your dream. If you're looking for a sign, That's this is your sign. sign to pursue what it is you want to do and don't worry about what anyone else is doing. You do you. Yeah, I think that's the bottom line. Of it really that really is the bottom line. That, that should is, be the end of the video. Is, but it's just, we're done. <laughs> it's just not. So we have one more and that is kind of fears about getting a job, mm. I guess because the assumption is that there are, le I just think this is so wrong, but the assumption is that there are less jobs in certain creative fields, I guess. I mean, I don't think there are any jobs right now. Yeah. So does it really matter what field you're in? That's so true. I think if you're gonna go with just follow your dreams at any time, now is probably the best yeah. time for that because every industry is taking a huge hit. And also, would you not just wanna be doing something that you love? Exactly. Rather than being miserable. I think it's so much more dependent on you and how much you're putting out there and working hard and getting lucky. Yeah. I, also, I also think that luck is a huge part right. of it. Whatever it is that you like lie in bed at night and think about doing, do it. And okay, you might have to take some weird stepping stones to get there. Like I did three years of something else before I got there, but <laughs> I don't regret that. That was just part of my Path, I yeah. guess, yeah. I mean, I hope you kind of, I don't know, were, re what's the right word? Not relieved. Reassured. <laughs> relieved. <laughs> I hope you were reassured by this, that, I mean, we are all doing such different things and we're all like succeeding in different places and at different times and that's okay. Also, you've been in education for 18 years of your life. Yeah. Your 20s are there to experiment. And yeah, to live that's like what life. they're for. So true. Do not set anything in stone. You don't even need to do any of these things. Like you, or you could just get a job. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, I hope you're relieved. <laughs> hope you're relieved. <laughs> I do hope that this was helpful in some way or just enjoyed hearing us chat. If you have any questions, obviously pop them below. We yeah. can try and answer them. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, send any over to Molly that are about what she did and I will try and answer everything as best as I can. And give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. We also are about to film a video on Molly's channel, which I'm pretty sure is being uploaded at the same time. Wildly different to this. Wildly. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs>